this video, we'll be talking about introns, exons, alternative splicing, what diseases can occur if there are issues, and how we make certain medications based off of introns, exons, and alternative splicing. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves that eukaryotic DNA has introns and exons, while prokaryotes don't have introns and exons. What are introns? Introns are intervening sequences that will be cut out from the final mRNA. Introns do not code for proteins, but they're important in the regulation of gene expression. So as you can see down here, these little things are introns, and up here, these little things are introns. And here, this should say HNRNA, by the way, but we'll get into that in a second. So anyway, introns do not code for protein, but are important in the regulation of gene expression. Now, exons are expressed, so they are kept in and will be present in the final mRNA. As you can see here, the exons are kept in. You could also see the exons here are kept in, and they contribute to the final protein product. So exons have the actual genetic information that codes for proteins, and they will be present in the final mRNA. Now with that background information, let's take a look at this image over here. So you could see that DNA is first turned into heterogeneous nuclear RNA, also called HNRNA. So HNRNA is essentially like an immature mRNA. After HNRNA is capped, spliced, and polyadenylated, it's called mRNA. So you could see here, it has the cap, polyadenylation, and the splicing. And then you could call it mRNA. The cool thing about having exons is that you can combine different exons by alternative splicing to produce a different number of proteins. And you see this in the dopamine receptors in our brain. So let's take a look down here. You have six different exons. And you can see that you can make different combinations of exons by deciding which ones to keep in and which ones to take out. So alternative splicing can make a variety of protein products from a single DNA sequence. As you can imagine, this is really efficient. So you don't need a lot more DNA. You could just turn one piece of DNA into many proteins. You might be asking yourself now, why should you care about introns and exons as well as splicing? Well, one disease that can occur if there are issues with splicing is beta thalassemia. So in beta thalassemia, there can be a certain intron that is not removed. And so the intron, which is normally removed, is accidentally kept in. In this case, beta thalassemia can occur, which is a blood disorder that reduces the production of hemoglobin, which is the iron-containing protein in red blood cells, that carries oxygen throughout your body. So people with beta thalassemia have low levels of hemoglobin, and this could lead to a lack of oxygen in many parts of the body. We can also use alternative splicing to treat diseases such as spinal muscular atrophy, which is treated with a drug that modulates the splicing of one gene to make another protein that is missing. How that works is if you look here between these two products, you see that the difference is exon 4. So essentially there is a drug that can allow, for example, let's say this product is missing and you're making this product. So this drug can cause the cells to splice out 4 and make this one, so you're not missing this one anymore. Now let's sum up the important facts. Introns are spliced out and exons are expressed and kept in. Alternative splicing allows you to make many different protein products from the same DNA segment. Thank you for watching this video, and if you got this far, please give this video a like. Comment below with questions or if you want us to make a video on a different topic. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a future video. 